Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for all the well wishes last week. I'm feeling much better this week. I just have this lingering cough and kind of a scratchy throat still. But let's get into this because I love this tumbler so much. I am working on a pink foil and ink argyle tumbler. So what I did is just a basic, I spray painted the tumbler red and then I added some red glitter, which I used Diamonds and Dust red carpet. And I just mixed that glitter right into my epoxy and epoxied this tumbler. And I didn't put too much glitter in so it was still very smooth after the first coat. I am working on a 30 ounce straight tumbler from the tumbler supply store. I had a basic general idea of what I wanted to do for this tumbler, so I didn't really have any specific measurements or anything, so I just found a cup that had some glitter in it and that seemed like a good height to block off for this section, so I just put my chalk marker, actually I think it was a Posco paint marker, and I just laid that on top of the cup and then sp spun the cup so it drew a line so that I could have a straight line to tape off for this portion. Um, I just wanted to have the argyle on the top half and my vision was to just kind of have it have the argyle on top and then the red on the bottom you'll see or if you saw the photo it's not exactly how it ended up I it just kind of evolved this was definitely one of those tumblers yet again that it told me what it wanted to do I did not tell it what to do so I tried a few different ways to achieve this argyle look on the top I tried just laying down strips of removable vinyl and I didn't like the way it looked. The triangles or the diamond shapes were too large. So I ultimately ended up just going into my Silhouette Studio design program and created a argyle pattern that was the width around of the tumbler and it worked out perfectly except for it was very difficult when I put the transfer tape on trying to get all of those little diamond shapes to lay down flat as I am trying to pull off the backing make sure that the removable vinyl stays flat on the tumbler but we made it work I just moved very slowly I sped this up and you can still see how slow I'm working so I wrapped that around basically the hinge method but I'm kind of tugging and pulling and doing all the things all at once and then when I got to the end I pulled up the transfer tape so that I didn't lay the vinyl on any of the transfer tape and then I pulled off the transfer tape and then picked out all of the diamonds. The reason I'm doing this is because I just want the in-between lines to stay down because we're going to be spray painting it white and I only want the red portion to show through on the in-between lines. After I picked off all of those diamond shapes I went through and really pushed down on all of those lines so that when we spray paint it hopefully nothing will seep underneath and I just took it outside and gave it a good coat of Rust-Oleum's flat white spray paint. I tried not to go too heavy because I don't want to chance anything seeping under any of those lines or getting runs. So I just gave it a good coat and then let it dry completely before moving on to this next step. Now I'm using only one color here. We are using Pinata's alcohol ink in the color magenta. And I am just taking a spray, not a spray, a paintbrush and I have a little bowl of 91% rubbing alcohol here and I'm just dipping it in and I'm putting some alcohol ink on the tumbler, adding a little bit of alcohol on my paintbrush and just dabbing it. I just want a very watercolory, not solid, just random spots look. It's hard to explain but that's kind of just my reasoning and my 
thought process. I tried not to let it drip too much either because I don't want those lines in there. When you put this alcohol ink on, it is very, very bright pink at first and it dries into a more magenta, not so hot pink color, which is exactly what I was wanting. And as I'm going along, I'm just, the more alcohol you add, the lighter it is. And I really love that variation with alcohol ink in the colors. It gives it a very watercolory look and I love watercolor looks. So I just went through back and forth all over until I was completely happy with the look of everything. After that, I decided to go ahead and pull up all of those little in-between lines. You really should wait until this dries completely to make sure you don't smudge it or scratch it, but I am very impatient and I couldn't wait to see how this look came out, so I just went ahead and peeled. I did let it dry for a little bit. It wasn't like brand new wet, but it was not completely dry, although I want to say that alcohol inks usually dry pretty fairly quickly, but I just set it aside while I cleaned up my mess and then went right into peeling. So I am very happy with the way it came out. Only a little bit of the white paint seeped under the lines and I just scraped it off with my tweezers here. And then I peeled off all the blue painter's tape at the bottom portion as well. Then I gave it a coat of epoxy and I am taking Waterfalls from Diamonds and Dust and I'm just giving it a light sprinkling on the top argyle portion. I just wanted to add a little bit of sparkle up there and I love Waterfalls because it will often just pick up the color of whatever is underneath it. So I love the little chunkies just randomly throughout that top argyle portion. And then I went in with some silver nail tape and we are going to outline every single line. So on all of the open lines on both sides, I laid down this silver holographic nail tape and it looks so cool. It like it already looked cool with just the argyle, but the holographic silver just kind of sends it over the top. So I outlined every single one in both directions. And then I also laid down a strip of this nail tape down the center of each pink triangle in both directions. So you'll see, it's hard to explain, but down the center of each line also to just give it that extra platy argyle look.
adding all of those little nail tape lines definitely took a long time, but I feel like it just adds so much to the, to the design that it is so worth it. So after I was done adding all of those, I trimmed off all of the overhang off the top, and then this is when it kind of just wasn't doing it for me anymore. I really loved the top portion, and I liked the red, but I just wasn't loving the red on the bottom, so I set it aside on my desk for several days until I just decided I needed to figure out something. And that's when I remembered that I had this really cool pink foil from Artistic Painting Studio, and I thought it would match pretty good, and sure enough, it matched perfectly and it's such a cool foil it has all these holographic circle dots on it and they are like color shifting it looks really cool so my first thought was to just add some grungy textured spots over the red but I was loving the way it was looking so much that I decided to just keep going so I gave it a pretty good coverage not full coverage you can still see some of the red spots underneath it but just covering it a lot with the foil, it looks really cool. I did use Tacket to apply this foil because at the time of making this video, I still was out of my foil glue, but you'll be happy to know that I did finally order some and it is actually arriving today as I'm making this voiceover, so I'm super excited for the mail to come. But I just finished up all of adding all of that foil and then I wanted it to carry over to the bottom but I had already added an epoxied over my little logo sticker so I just added some tack it just to the rim and then added that foil right on there as well. After that, I took the same nail tape and I just put a little line right where the argyle ended and the solid foil portion started. And then to add just a little bit something more, I decided to add some fun lines with that nail tape. And I just went over the foil portion and I just went all around and no particular rhyme or reason pattern until I actually ran out of nail tape. And I thought it was just a fun little like surprise element that adds a little bit of punch to the design, but also ties in the bottom portion with the top argyle portion as well. After that, I gave it a coat of epoxy so it would be nice and smooth when we add our vinyl decal. I got this one from Diamonds and Dust Etsy shop. I'll leave that down in the description box where you can find it. And I really wanted it to punch a big impact with the wording, so I made it fairly large. Um, the first time I did it, I didn't like the color that I picked. It just blended in too much. It was a magenta color, and it just blended in too much. So I picked a silver for the offset just to kind of tie it all in together and then I did the actual wording in white so it stood out but it kind of blended it all together as well and I applied that in sections because I was too afraid that I was going to not get it lined up very well and then after that I gave it two final coats of epoxy and this beauty was all done. Sometimes I have to remind myself that I don't have to add a beautiful patterned vinyl on every tumbler that you can get a beautiful tumbler with just using other elements as well. But that is it. I hope you all have been inspired in some way or another by this fun pink on pink with a little red tone argyle tumbler and I will leave all of the information down in the description box where you can find me and all of the products that I used. I thank y'all for being here. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial as much as I love this tumbler. It will be available for sale on my website if you would like to snag this beauty and I will see y'all next week. Bye y'all. <music>